The old world is weak. God damn, this was good. Total War Warhammer is a grand strategy game developed by the Creative Assembly and published by Sega for PC and... I'm not gonna lie, I often struggle with grand strategy games, and that includes the Total War series. I was overwhelmed by all the information conveyed to me in Total War Rome, and Total War Attila just ran like shit on my laptop. But this, not only did it run fairly smoothly, but it was accessible! I had so much fun with this managing my empires and armies, that I found myself losing track of time repeatedly, just saying, just one more turn, just one more turn! The only other strategy game to do that to me was the Age of Wonders series. Nice. Abandoning real world history for the Warhammer fantasy setting, as it turns out, was a smart move, since it allowed Crab Assembly to really stretch their creative muscles, no pun intended. The various factions all have unique characteristics that goes beyond just simple racial appearances. The Empire plays more like prior Total War games, what with assigning officers and such. The Vampire Counts are similar to the Zerg from StarCraft, really low cost and can quickly reinforce themselves, and Chaos is entirely nomadic with a war-fueled economy. Unfortunately, during my time with the game, I only ended up playing as these three factions and I have no idea what the others are like, but do expect them to have their own strengths and weaknesses. Skill trees add a nice degree of customization, not only for your empire, but also your individual armies. And thanks to the fantasy setting, it goes beyond stats modifiers and cosmetic changes. Your military commanders can learn different forms of magic, and let me tell you, it can really help out in a pinch. Imperial management took some getting used to, though, through trial and error, but eventually it all clicked together. Economics is similar to Age of Wonders, you just need to make sure your total upkeep of your armies doesn't outstretch what your provinces can produce, but this does change based on faction. Plus, when you take control of a settlement, you seize control of a fraction of a province. Gaining complete control lets you impose edicts, changing how the economics of a province functions, giving you some control over your empire's revenue that I have not seen in a strategy game before. There are also randomly generated events where you must make a choice. That will affect your empire in a variety of ways and can really have an impact on battles. These also add some light story elements, but it's nothing really engrossing. In fact, the game does try to weave a narrative with, from what I could see, randomly generated quest events. But these are entirely optional and they really don't add much to the experience. Of course, if there's one thing the Total War series is known for, it's a combination of turn-based strategy and real-time combat. This is flawed. Good, but flawed. You see, it is friggin' awesome having these battlefields laid out before you, zooming in down to your troops and planning their starting positions and then engaging the enemy. But the battles just can't help but feel half-baked or underwhelming due to one factor. Your troops have no free will of their own. Like, every time I chose to tackle a battle in real time, I'd constantly find situations where a group of my warriors had wiped out an enemy group and then just stood there gormlessly like they were waiting for me to give them a cookie. All the while, their allies were still fighting, having the morale broken, or waiting for cookies as well. This issue aside, the real time battles are still fun and the inclusion of magic adds some extra depth that I imagine wasn't there before. But if you're fighting an army that's definitely weaker than yours, you really can just rely on the auto resolve function to take care of it with minimal losses most of the time. Like the Imperial management, diplomacy took some getting used to. I do have some experience with such systems thanks to, again, Age of Wonders. But during my first game, whenever I tried to engage in diplomacy, all my requests were denied, and eventually I saw a piece of information that was not clearly displayed. Turned out me betraying a peace treaty with another faction had some larger consequences than I thought. And even when I was on good terms with someone, 9 out of 10 times they would just reject my offers. The only time I got anyone to agree to something like becoming my vassal was when I conquered them as chaos. But there are some things in the game that do grate me very much so, like it's DRM and DLC practices. I don't have regular internet access, and there have been many times where an update would come out for this game and I couldn't download the whole thing. This meant I couldn't play the game at all, and worse, when the update was installed, I still couldn't play, unless I was connected to the internet so I could re-authenticate. This angered me to no end due to a couple of instances where the game just wouldn't run after I installed an update and I was wondering, the hell is this? You worked before! 
Then there's the DLC. I mean, oh my god. For those who don't know, when this game came out, Sega locked off Chaos as day one DLC. Chaos, one of the most iconic races of Warhammer. Thankfully, the backlash against it was so great that they made it free for the first month of release. But now, sorry to say, you gotta pay eight bucks to bring about the end times. It doesn't help either that the second piece of DLC was just a rehash of the Gore DLC for Total War Attila. Thankfully, the DLC has improved with Call of the Beastman adding a new race and a separate narrative campaign, and The Grim and the Grave adding some more story elements and unit types to the main game for Warhammer Diehards. Total War Warhammer has been a fantastic experience for me, but what is definitely flawed in its real-time combat, and from what I've heard, some long-time Total War fans aren't happy with how some things have been set up, but as an outsider, it was the perfect introduction to the series for me. And considering that this is supposed to be the first of a trilogy, I can't wait to see how they improve on it. If you're looking for something to sink long hours into and have a blast tearing up a fantasy setting, then this is the game for you. Trust me. Hey, thanks for watching this video, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, how about you check out some of my other game reviews or maybe some of my movie reviews. And next month, instead of doing a full-blown review, I'm actually gonna do a bit of an indie showcase. I've got my hands on some indie games that I really wanna talk about. So, uh, stay tuned for that.